drop the brace. What's going on, guys? It's Ryan here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Dominion Tower guide. This guide is going to cover pretty much all of the special challenges. And uh, for those of you that are looking for specifically the indigestion challenge, uh, I'll have that in here too, because I know that's like the hardest one, and I think a lot of people are going to have trouble with that one specifically. So I hope you guys enjoy. This took me a long time to make, so if this benefited you in any way, I would appreciate a like, because it just shows me, you know, it encourages me to keep doing more videos. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy. So the first special challenge in the Dominion Tower is called Revenge of the Evil Chickens. In this fight, you must face 15 evil chickens at once. Although it doesn't say on the challenge interface, there's a handicap that does not allow you to use prayer. My gear for this challenge was full ranged void with dual wield chaotic crossbows. Since the evil chickens made you, it's advised to bring high mage defense gear, although this isn't really needed. The trick to this fight is to lure the chickens so that there's a line of them. As you can see in the background footage, I was not able to completely line them up. It's pretty hard to and don't expect to be able to do it easily. What I did was lure as many of them as I could into a line, and first go the ones that were beside me. It's important to note that even though they use magic, they will not attack you unless they are in melee distance. Bombardment and Ricochet are good abilities, as they'll damage chickens that you're not directly attacking. My first time fighting this challenge, I brought a Steel Titan and they don't work too well. They'll probably kill about maybe one or two of the chickens. I didn't really need food for my yak either, but in case you mess up the lore, you're going to need extra food. Also with the Steel Titan, sometimes it'll take the chicken it's fighting out of the line and it'll just walk up and attack you. The next special challenge in the Dominion Tower is called Finish In. In this fight you must face Erev, Kashi the Deathless, General Khazard, the Black Knight Guardian, the Kendall, and the Three Colored Golems. This fight is in multi-combat and all of your enemies will start with 20% health. The handicaps on this fight are no prayers, reduced melee, magic, and ranged defense, and you will start the fight poisoned. You cannot use ultimate abilities, you will be randomly dazed, and you cannot use any of the power-ups from Dominion Tower. This does not include potions like overloads. There's not much to say about this fight as it's pretty straightforward. Chain is a good ability to use as it is an area of effect ability and all of the monsters will be close together. The golems have pretty high defense, so I would leave them for last. The monsters such as Erev, Kashi the Deathless, and General Khazard will go through the standard cutscenes well, that you would normally encounter when fighting them in Dominion Tower. It can be pretty annoying to talk to Erev, so you might want to save him for later on. The gear setup I used in this fight was full Void Mage with an Arcane Spear Shield and a Master Wand. This can be easily done with lower level gear, as I did not use one piece of food. The third special challenge in the Dominion Tower is called Just Die Already. You will be fighting six Dagonoth Sentinels at once. There are no handicaps in this challenge. My gear setup for this fight was full Melee Void and a Chaotic Maul. When dealing with this challenge, it's important to get as much damage per second as you can. It should also be noted that they will attack you with range, so melee will be the most wise when it comes to defense. A Steel Titan can be very useful here, as the first few Sentinels you'll be trying to outhit their healing abilities. This one isn't very hard, even without a Steel Titan. Simply just stand in the middle of all the Sentinels and kill them one by one. Rollwind is a good ability to use while doing so. The Sentinels will not move around you. Overall, this is probably the easiest Dominion Tower special challenge. The next Dominion Tower special challenge is called I Eat Dagonets for Breakfast. In this special challenge, you'll be taking on Dagonoth Mother version 1, version 2, and two Dagonoth Sentinels. A Baomung will be placed beside you at the start of the challenge. For this fight, you want to bring every attack style, as well as every elemental spell. First, you'll want to kill the two Dagonoth Sentinels. You can also just stand between them and kill the Mother version 1, but since I'm colorblind, it's hard for me to multitask. Once the Sentinels are dead, You'll want to focus your attention on the Dagonoth Mother version 1. Orange is melee, green is ranged, white is air, blue is water, brown is earth, and red is fire. It has a pattern to it, but it shouldn't take you long enough for that to matter. Once you've finished all of that, you must pick up the Baomung if you haven't so already, and attack the Dagonoth Mother version 2 with it. It will not engage in its color switching mode unless you have done so. The colors are the same as the Dagonoth Mother, Mother version 1, for some reason, however, the red version is glitched. For some reason, you can't harm her with fire while it's red. I found that earth spells will still hit her. I'm not sure why, though. She'll usually just switch between two different colors, but these are random, and this may not always be the case. My gear setup for this fight was all three versions of Void, along with a Chaotic Maul, Crystal Bow, and Chaotic Staff. 
You can switch to the Dagonoth King rings with a Tokuzo if you think you'll need more inventory space. The reason I brought a Crystal Bow instead of Chaotic Crossbows was because I thought it would be annoying to switch weapons. For this fight, I used the Sentinels to gain Adrenaline, and then I used Momentum. That way I wouldn't have to worry about switching action bars along with switching my setup. This is the first fight in the video where you'll actually need some food, so don't, uh, don't underestimate this boss. The next special challenge I'll be covering is called You'll Never Defeat Me. In this fight you must take on all of the Lunar Diplomacy bosses as well as the Untouchable from Dream Mentor simultaneously. The end goal is to survive for 5 minutes. The handicap in this fight is that you cannot use food, your life points will be halved at the beginning, and a familiar plate body and a shield are all banned. My setup for this fight was Ganodermic with the highest defense bonuses I could get in each slot. After recording this clip, I tested to see if a shield bow would work. It does, meaning that you can still use defensive abilities such as resonance for an advantage. It's important to note that you cannot walk through any of the monsters in this fight, which will be a hindrance as a majority of this is luring. Although there is no food penalty, there will be scorpion meat randomly dropped on the edges of the arena. Once lured correctly, you should not try to grab this food, as you will be not taking any damage. When the fight starts, do not move. All of the monsters will be trapped behind the inadequacy, which is the big blob in the center. Once the doubt starts spawning, you will need to move around. The inadequacy will remain stationary throughout the fight, so you need to run around the arena and try to get them trapped. The easiest way to do this is to run all the way to the west door and wait for all of the monsters besides the inadequacy to be near you. Then run behind the inadequacy. Note that you cannot run through it and walking around it can be difficult so you're going to have to click carefully. If a doubt manages to get around the inadequacy, you can kill it. If anything else does, you should try again until it is lured. The way I lured it is weird, but it is possible to get a perfect lure like the one I will show on screen now. This is an extremely easy challenge once you have it lured as you will not take any more damage. The last easy special challenge is called Hey, Eat Power Up. In this challenge you will be taking on several low level bosses. They have all been adjusted so that they will only attack you while they are in melee range. The handicaps are that there are no food, armor, or weapons allowed. There will be some weapons that are quest related that are spawned next to you at the start, but you won't be needing these. The beginning of the fight is most risky, as one of the bosses spawned is Elvark. She will not use dragon fire unless you are within melee range. You can drink a super any fire potion before you enter the fight. You are also able to bring summoning familiars in with you. I chose to bring a steel titan as this is the best familiar I can use. When the fight starts, call your familiar and pray melee. Let one monster hit you, then unload your familiar's special attacks to kill Elvarg as quickly as possible. After Elvarg is dead, you want to shift your titan's attention to the colonomancer. You should notice that there are several different types of bonds spawned around the perimeter of the arena. The two spawns you want to be focusing on are the one on the east by the exit door and the southernmost one. These are the colossal bonds. They have the widest range of attack and will hit every monster by about 700. Once the colonomancer is dead, you want to have your titan attack Solus. He will hit you fairly hard if he gets within melee distance. After Solus is dead, have it attack Tarn, as although it's not a threat, it has the most life points of all the bosses, and then you also have to kill its ghost form too. The next special challenge I'll be covering is the Double Nomad Challenge. In this fight you have to kill two nomads back to back, not at once. There are no handicaps. In this clip I used Derox and Dual Chaotix Longswords to kill it. I didn't have Void back then, but I would recommend it. Note that this clip was taken from an older video before the EOC update earlier in the month. Since you are fighting Nomad in the Dominion Tower, I'm going to assume you already fought it before and that you vaguely remember some of its attacks. The first special attack I will use are the Landmines. It is important not to move as they will one hit KO you. Keep auto retaliate off and continue to attack Nomad. If he teleports, do not attack him as sometimes you will run over one of his mines and die. The next attack you can use is the attack where he freezes you and charges an attack. Use freedom, heal to full life points, and continue attacking the boss. It will hit you for about 75% of your life points. Once he's finished using the attack, heal back to full life points. When he is almost dead, he will heal a considerable amount of life points. Continue attacking like normal and use the above strategies. Once he is almost dead again, he will go into a rage mode. You shouldn't worry about this too much as he won't hit you too often. Once the first nomad is dead, repeat the steps for the second one. You can probably do this challenge in one inventory of food. If you're not familiar with the evolution of combat, I would recommend bringing a yak, otherwise a steel titan will suffice. I once beat this single nomad with full rock tail, but you must be careful as I've also accidentally killed myself plenty of times. 
What is most definitely the hardest Dominion Tower special challenge is called Indigestion. In this challenge you will be fighting all of the recipe for disaster bosses at once. The handicaps are that you cannot use a shield, any power ups, you will have reduced melee, magic, and range defense, you cannot use familiars, a plate body, and no ultimate abilities. It is very important to follow this guide exactly, as if you don't you will die extremely fast. My setup was Carol's helm and bottom, Barrow's gloves, comp cape which can be replaced with a skill cape or max cape, Glavens, Tokuzo, crystal bow, and a chaotic staff. I also used a vampirism aura and although it's not needed, I would de definitely recommend some type of aura as this is extremely difficult and any advantage you can get, you should take. Say your quick prayers to anguish and soul split. Before you go into the boss fight, take a sip of your overload and prayer renewal. When you are going through the small cutscene before the fight initiates, put on protect magic and spam click on your mini map to walk you to the west door where you, where you came in. Once you get to the door, put on your quick prayers, and when the fight starts, you may lose all of your run energy, but that's okay, just keep walking to the spot one south of the western door. Once there, you need to stun the Colonomancer. This is probably the most important part of your survival, and if you miss the stun, I would probably just kill yourself and restart. After it's bound, be sure to take him out as quickly as possible. Using abilities like Ricochet will help you out in taking the other monsters as well. After killing the Colonomancer, kill the rest of the bosses that are near the door with you. Try not to eat as much so that you can use abilities like Rapid Fire, because you have to keep in mind that eating food will lower your adrenaline. But don't worry if you have to eat, because if you look at my clip, I was getting raped, so you know don't worry about it if you can't do that. Once all of those monsters are dead, you'll be focusing on the gelatinous behemoth. Whatever you do, do not run towards the middle. You want to mage and range this so that the big blob in the background will not notice you. It has the same color pattern as the Dagonoth Mothers, so you would just want to use range and magic until it's dead. Try to save up as much adrenaline as you can during the fight with this monster. At this point you've probably noticed a big blob wandering around on the other side of the arena has no idea where you are. This is good, because he will hit you very very hard with melee. The strategy is to immediately use impact on it, which will stun it and keep it in place. After this, you should use asphyxiate and then spam magic abilities, such as wild magic until it's dead. If it gets in melee range and you attack it, it will unequip your weapon. If this happens, just try to get it stunned and then continue. The difficulty of this is probably comparable to the Thakir block off Dungeoneering Saga, and I would just be very careful, follow this guide as best you can, and just don't give up. My first time, it took me like an hour of raging, so I mean don't, don't freak out about it, you'll get it eventually. The last special challenge in the Dominion Tower is called The Fire, It Burns. This guide will specifically cover the hard version, however the same tactics still apply for the easy one. In this fight, you'll be at the top of the tower facing a creature named Sunfreet. The following handicaps will be in place while fighting this battle. You will not have access to power-ups, familiars, you will not be able to use any ultimate abilities or prayers. In terms of gear, I would suggest Void with a fast attacking weapon like Chaotic Claws. Although in this video I used a Chaotic Maul, it was my first time fighting it and I didn't know that you had a damage cap at 500. Since the cap is so low, you're going to want a fast but strong attacking weapon. That's why I believe that Chaotic Claws would be the best melee weapon to use in this scenario. A good inventory to bring is an overload flask and the rest of your inventory full of rocktails. Sunfree has two phases, a ground phase and an airborne phase. As soon as you enter the chamber, Sunfree will begin its airborne phase. It will be unattackable and you won't be able to see it, and you will be very vulnerable to its fire breath attacks. It will have four waves of fire and they will always come down in the same areas in the same order. On screen, you're going to see the safe areas for each wave of attack highlighted. You want to make sure you're standing in the highlighted areas, or you will be hit very hard and very rapidly, and if you're there for more than a second, you will probably die. What may happen between the second and third waves of fire is that you won't be able to avoid the fire. Usually what will happen is you'll either be hit by the remnants of the second fire that haven't disappeared yet, or you'll be hit by the very beginning of the third fire 
Using abilities like Surge and Escape, you can probably avoid the fires, but these just disorient me and I didn't want to use them. After four waves of fire, it will come back to the ground. This is your opportunity to damage it. It will attack you with melee while in melee distance and with magic while further away. Sunfree has two special attacks while on the ground. In both cases, it will stop attacking you, and this is an indicator that you must run several squares away and keep your back faced away. For one of the attacks, it will stun you, although freedom can be used to easily free yourself. The second attack, it will sweep at you with its tail. I didn't get hit by this, but from what I've heard, it'll damage you heavily, and you should try your best to avoid it. Considering this was my first time fighting it, and I was not hit by either attack, it should be easy for you to avoid as well. From what I can tell, winning or losing the fight comes down to how well you can avoid the flame attacks. I messed up in the beginning, and I got distracted towards the end of the kill, so I came very close to dying. If I hadn't been distracted, it would have been a much easier fight still very close, so don't be discouraged if you can't beat it on your first attempt. I never fought this before the evolution of combat, but from what I can tell, it seems to be much easier. Alright guys, so that's it for my guide. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment on the video, or you can send us a personal message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.